Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising books comprised of The Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, New Release, The Joy of Cruising Again, as well as other fun, informative global cruise personalities. It is the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. If you hear about a cruise that interests you, book it at www.thejoyofcruising.net. It helps support the channel through our partnership with Where's Walters Travel. We really appreciate your feedback, so leave us a text. Paul can't reply, but he may read your text on air. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul. And I'm delighted to welcome this week on the Joy of Cruising podcast, John Perry, creator of the John the Wanderer blog, Facebook page, and Instagram. John is a consummate cruise aficionado. He notes there is something about being on the ocean that is such an awesome experience. Plus, having all the food and entertainment included in one place makes for an awesome vacation. You can't go wrong with going on a cruise. Since childhood, he has loved anything to do with travel and would get cruise brochures and plan trips for his family. To his parents' amazement, he would research destinations and pick the right room on the ship as well as what to do with, while the family visited the ports. Fast forward to today, John works as a travel advisor and still loves planning trips and hopping on a ship and being whisked off to a tropical destination. I teasingly use the analogy of Superman when discussing John. Most of the time, he is a mild-mannered travel agent where he can help his clients plan an amazing cruise or land vacation and experience all the fun that he does when he travels. But at other times, he becomes John the Wanderer, the super cruiser. For instance, when I first reached out to John, we couldn't schedule a conversation because he was headed to the inaugural cruise for the new Margarita at Sea Islander. Noting almost apologetically, I'm not a parrot head or anything. I normally do more luxury cruises like ex- celebrity explorer journeys. I told him that's okay. I want to talk about those other lines too. But he would be the first to give listeners a report on the Islander. Shortly after the Islander, John was also going on Celebrity Beyond a week later for the President's Cruise. So I definitely wanted to wait so we could have our conversation until after he returned. Then I found out he was about to sail the new Royal Caribbean Utopia of the Seas, the world's second largest ship. So we deferred our conversation yet again because I had to hear about that. No wonder he is known as John the Wanderer. Welcome, John, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Hey, how are you? I'm glad to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to talk. Well, I'm I'm glad to uh, meet you virtually. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's been a whirlwind week getting back from Utopia of the Seas uh, media event, so I had a great time. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about the madness going on in uh, airports right now. I hope you don't have any clients trying to get to a cruise. Yeah, I'd... I tried to sort through some things um, this morning, but um, fortunately, my flight myself was yesterday before the issue happened, so I didn't really have a uh, an impact. But it's pretty crazy how it impacted every airline and everything. So I know it's a, a big deal to get people places. So I know that uh, uh, what's happening today, and by the way, uh, to the listeners, it is as I'm recording this, it's July 19th, and there's a massive uh, outage uh, nationwide or worldwide, maybe, uh, affecting a lot of stuff, but but uh, specifically uh, air, airlines. Uh, this is a good time to remind you, I say it all the time, and I'm sure John does to his clients as well, never, ever fly in on the day of a cruise departure. So uh, before we uh, discuss uh, John the Wanderer, John, tell our listeners uh, about yourself in general, uh, where you're from, where you live, uh, professional background, anything you would like to share. Okay. Uh, well, 
My name is John and I live in Minnesota. I live in Minneapolis and um, I've been in the Twin Cities for around 20 years. Uh, prior to that, I grew up in Michigan on the Lansing area and um, I had a little time in New York as well. Um, I have an MBA from University of Michigan and I, uh, among the many different things that I do, one of the things is I, I work in accounting and finance uh, for healthcare program. And um, I also, uh, you know, I do content creation online as well as I help people with travel. So uh, you, you, you mentioned you spent a little time in New York. I'm from New York. Uh, where, where about did you uh, live? Uh, well, I lived in uh, Woodside in Queens, um, just off of the seven train. And uh, I worked uh, in accounting and finance uh, in Battery Park. Uh, for a little while, a couple of years. So, sounds like we have a, a, some similarities in, in our background. I, I did much of my, all of my corporate career in in accounting and finance, and, and I also uh, have an MBA. So we probably have some things we can chat about oh. offline. <laughs> yeah, we probably can, uh, definitely. So say a little bit about your travel business. Okay. Um, well, I have someone that's really passionate about cruising and um you know ever since i was a kid i i loved helping people with travel or i mean i i just spent a lot of time planning my own family's vacations and all that sort of thing and it's over the years i've just um you know i kind of fell in love with cruising and uh i enjoy uh helping plan with people so uh i'm i'm excited to be able to help uh, people plan some good good uh destinations as well as uh special cruises and things of that sort um uh, Okay. Uh, uh, talk about the John the Wanderer brand. When and uh, how did it develop? That's a good question. Um, I, I've i been an online content creator for maybe eight or so years. So my, I'm not the best with remembering exact dates of things, um, but, but it's somewhere in that range. And um, essentially, I just, I love to travel all the time. And, um, you know, I, I, I went to different conventions and networking events with other fellow traveler travelers and people always said hey why aren't you writing because you do a lot of traveling and I said oh hey that could be interesting so I started writing I was mostly at the beginning uh, writing about uh different flights and like experiences at hotels and things of that sort and then I kind of progressed into uh you know kind of doing an overview like a person a uh, personal viewpoint of uh, going on cruises. So I've been on a ton since, especially since COVID. And um, it's, you know, it's kind of fun to kind of summarize the experience. Yeah, I, I know a lot of uh, uh, creators and even just, you know, cruisers who, who you know, could care less about being a, a YouTuber or a blogger. Uh, I know a lot hit the ground running after the uh, shutdown because there was so much... Uh, you know, they were, if you were like me, you were climbing the walls. And uh, once you could cruise, I mean, I ran into people who have cruised four and five and 10 and 12 times uh, a year since since the cruising started back up. But we'll get to that. Um, say something about your different platforms. So I, I think you have a blog, a Facebook page, mm -hmm. an IG. Am I missing anything? Yeah, I mean, my primary mode of uh, communication online is via Instagram uh, as John the Wanderer. Um, but I also uh, have a, a small account with TikTok, of course, like most people, and then YouTube. Uh, for the most part, I use YouTube in order to uh, put videos up that I'm, I use on my blog uh, because it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, link to a video on YouTube than try to code in uh, putting a video directly on a website so they've made it really easy to link up how are you doing on tiktok you just started or you've been on it a while oh i go on and off and on i i don't have a whole lot of uh most of my engagement is on instagram you know i i uh i i haven't been with tiktok very long only about maybe a month or two two months maybe at the most and i remember early mm -hmm. on i made a post i have a facebook uh uh, uh podcast group on on uh, on Facebook, and I made a post, and I simply said, "Hey, I just joined TikTok. I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but uh, 
I've started to uh, mainly promoing upcoming podcasts. I've started to uh, to do a lot of that, and I'm 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 beginning to get some traction. So I, I won't say I know what I'm doing, but uh, uh, I'm trying things. So and and like I said, it's catching. Yeah, that's good. It seems to be catching on. Yeah, I know a lot of people who are very successful on that. And in fact, I actually um, I have a good group of friends that some of them are very, very successful with TikTok. And that's actually some of the reasons how they've gotten invited to work with different brands is based on their presence and engagement on on TikTok, uh, among other things. So um, so it is really a great thing to just keep experimenting with. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun scrolling through other people's uh, posts to get some ideas and well, all that. As you know, well. maybe. Uh... Given that you said that's how a lot of people get noticed by, uh, you know, cruise lines and things like that, maybe I should redouble my efforts because I, 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 I'd love to get noticed <laughs> by, uh, by, uh, right. you know, people in my field. Um, so, so, so let's go back to the beginning. Uh, and when I say to the beginning, specifically uh, cruising, uh, when and on what okay. ship was your first cruise? My first cruise was on Majesty of the Seas, and it was a long time ago. Uh, I was 16 years old. I went with my family, um, and uh, it was really awesome because I got to do the teen programs and all that stuff. As you know, on cruises, there's programs for kids, programs for teens, programs for everybody, really. And, um, you know, they had a lot of different events where you socialize with the different people my my age, and um, I just kind of fell in love with cruises at that point. And it was really funny because um, at the time, like Majesty of the Seas was the biggest ship ever and it was, you know, brand new. And, you know, and, uh, you know, a few years back, uh, I was on the, you know, like an Oasis class ship. And um, there was a, the sister to that ship was next to it in, in one of the ports and it just looked like a teeny little boat. It's just amazing how things have changed over you know, 20, 30 years. Um, yeah. And you know, it's funny so. when I, I, I always ask guests uh, what their first cruise was. And, and so many of them say at the time it was the largest ship in the world. And, and, and today they're tiny. I, I have the same story. My first cruise was on Sovereign of the Seas uh, in uh, uh, mm -hmm. 1988. And it was called, it was considered the world's first mega ship. You know, it was the largest ship in the world when it was introduced it was the largest ship in the world by far i mean it's, it wasn't just a little bit bigger than the the, the, the largest yeah, it, it was which was, was was relative at the time relatively huge and today you know sovereign of the seas would fit in the <laughs> promenade of uh of uh, icon or, or or utopia that you just got off of yeah. um so That's so fair. it sounds like a fair statement was that you got hooked on that first cruise. Yeah, that would definitely be a fair statement uh, because ever since then, I just kind of went running and I went on a bunch when I was younger. And then, um, you know, I took a little break and then COVID happened. And then I'm, you know, I saw the content of the people working on ships and um, and just remembered, oh man, it was so much fun. And then I said, I got to go back. And, and when I did, it was still during the restart. So there were, you know, a lot fewer people on board. It was more personalized experience. Uh, you know, so it made it really, really interesting to get to sail. Like, for example, one of the sailings I went on uh, was on a ship that would be like about four or five thousand people, and there were six hundred on there. So you pretty much walked around, and it felt at first it felt a little weird because you're used to people everywhere, and and then uh, just being able to find space everywhere so it was really interesting and those also had a couple of days at private islands uh, which you know all that just contributed to <laughs> really making it amazing and, and then um, ever since then i just kind of have been going on a lot more and more so it seems now like after uh uh that first cruise how soon did you cruise again uh i think that one was in september so then i i had one maybe in October, one in November, one in December. So maybe wow, one, you, one a month you, you, there. You really then, got you know, hooked. Yeah. Um, oh, you mean that initial one when I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, yeah, after Okay, Majesty. I'm sorry. Definitely not that fast. It was maybe oh, okay. like one or two a year. Then. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was young, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty much it was probably in that range. But it's just since COVID, I've been doing 
a you know a lot more significant number of them. Well, you brought it up, so uh, you brought up the C word. So, how how did you uh, fare during the uh, COVID shutdown? It sounds like you had already gotten hooked on cruises. Um, did you did you climb the walls like me, or did you do something <laughs> constructive? I've I've heard of people, you know, running their first marathon, uh, growing a pandemic garden. I even talked to one g- gentleman who who he was medically trained and he volunteered to help his country in their vaccination effort. So he was given shots. <laughs> Would you okay. do anything uh, special or just just plan for your escape from your house when cruising came back? Yeah, I, I mean, I was very fortunate in that I, I worked in a job that it was pretty much hybrid the whole time. So I, I didn't, I wasn't at home every single day. I was at home, you know, a few days a week in, a, in the office for, the other days so i had a little bit of balance then um and yeah i was just really you know thinking about traveling you know spending more time outside etc um so I, I don't have any remarkable story i mean like you know i i volunteered when i can uh but a lot of the places around here because if you weren't medically uh, you weren't a doctor nurse or something you weren't able to volunteer with some of those efforts for vaccinations so then the crew, the, I'm sorry, the lockdown ended. Uh, what was your first cruise back? But uh, I actually did an MSC cruise uh, on uh, Maravilla. And um, I actually did that as a back-to-back. I first booked a four-day, and then I was thinking about spending some time in uh, Miami for a couple of days beforehand. And then with the prices so low, I just ended up booking as a back-to-back. And, you know, that was at the time when you had to, uh, vaccinate or you'd be vaccinated as well as tests right before you're going. So there's always that little nervousness with, uh, you know, especially with the back to back, because before you get to go on the second one, they, they did another test and, you know, it was fine. Though. I mean, it was, it, it was really awesome because the, you know, so few people, um, it, it, the ironic thing was the first one was a three night and those are always more busy than on the four nights. So it was really, it wasn't, that empty but it, you know it was maybe half occupancy um and then but the other the four day was a lot fewer people so it went from being people everywhere to being more like relaxed which so that's the the cruise that you mentioned where it was only 600 on no it was well, one later than that i don't remember the on from that one but it was just a. it was actually on another msc ship the one that where it was it was that was in january of uh 22 i believe and um that one yeah it was whatever four or 4500 ship with 600 people and that that went that spent three days at uh ocean k so that was awesome i i went on my first uh or only uh msc uh maravilla cruise mm-hmm. for christmas and of course you know it was packed <laughs> in fact yeah <laughs> in fact i i miss those those days where you know, you you had very few people on the ship. I I, I started back uh, quite a bit later than you. My first cruise back was on Symphony, and it was so. I mean, you know, it was it it was it was like normal. <laughs> it was yep. So I mean, we had to wear, wear masks and all of that, uh, mm-hmm. and take those stupid uh, tests and call in and blah 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 blah. It was a really crazy time. Uh, so we were still doing that, but they weren't. Uh, you know, keeping the the the, the uh, passenger count low at that time. They were they were back at it. Yep. Uh, so so it sounds like uh, from what you said, you hit the ground running when you came back. So so t- talk us through some of those those cruises right after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's kind of when I I hadn't gone on Celebrity before then, and um, I had the opportunity to go on on one and i was just really hooked at that point i it was became pretty much my favorite mainstream cruise line just because of the entertainment and um as well as i, I love the coffee experience there with the cafe de basio and um and all that and just like the some of the performances are really cool and then the, you know how they do the martini bar and all that with the uh flair bartending it's so i i really found it that it was great and all over experience so i i went on several celebrity ships during the time uh all the edge class um 
and then uh, some of the smaller ships as well. Um, but I'm not really brand. I'm more or less brand agnostic, though, because, I, you know, I, I find a good time on all cruises from MSC to a luxury one. So it um, it's really kind of all over the place. So I, I, I've honestly you know, I've been on Royal, I've been on Norwegian, I've been on MSC. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I, and, um, I, I'm the same way. I, I, I am brand agnostic. I, I would I would be at a very high loyalty tier if I stuck you know, stuck with a, with a, with a brand, but, but I'm right. like you, I, 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 I'm all over the place. Uh, so you mentioned the edge class, which, what's your, what, which edge class ships have you been on? Uh, well, I've been on all four of them. Uh, so edge apex beyond an ascent. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm actually booked on the Excel for next year as well. So we, we I'll ask you about, Ascent in a little while because I'll be going on that in a few months. Uh, uh, but yeah, I've I've only been on Beyond, and and will be going on on Ascent. But but I will tell you that Beyond uh, is my favorite ship that I've ever been on. Uh, it it was just it was perfect, and it might have been the circumstances too. You know, it was my first first Mediterranean cruise. So that was a, a huge uh, a highlight, See, you know, stopping. And, and it was very port intensive. Uh, so we, 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 I think it was a 10-day cruise. And, and I think we stopped at eight ports, you know. And uh, uh, so I, I loved Beyond. So it was an easy decision to, to book uh, Ascent when, when, when it was, when it came out. So... Uh, get me excited about Ascent. Uh, tell me about Ascent. <laughs> okay, well, the, the sailing I went on is actually one of the first ones uh, when it came out, and it was it was actually one that they officially did as a, a brother captain sailing. So there was two captains on board because, as you as you know, um, Celebrity uh, made a big deal about having their two star uh, Greek captains. Um, Captain Dimitri and, and Captain Tesos, and um, it happened to be, be one where they were both uh, on board as well as Luigi was the cruise director. So that combination between the crazy Greek captains and then Luigi, which he's uh, he's one of the best uh, cruise directors out there in terms of uh, getting people motivated and you know leading the dances and you know just making sure everyone has a good time. Um, so all those things came together, and it was just a, uh, you know it's a great experience, and and I've. Fortunately, I uh, got the opportunity to meet both the, the captains uh, briefly uh, for a visit of the of the bridge on that sailing, and um, you know they're hilarious in person. Also, yeah, I, I hope I get so lucky. I, I uh, when I went on Beyond, you know, of course, a lot of people were excited about uh, going on Beyond because of Captain Kate. Uh, and when I went on Beyond, Captain Kate was on on leave, so we had we we had a, another captain. Uh, but Luigi was the cruise director, um, right. so so hopefully the the two brothers are uh, are going to be on the cruise. And when do I leave? I think it's I think it's November. I should know that, but it's not it's not my next cruise, so I don't really. I'm not even thinking. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to remember those not, when they, you got yeah, more before yeah. them. So, uh, uh, so, so, what are some other um, uh, major cruises after after the shutdown? Let's see here. Oh, that's, there's a lot to number. I mean, last last year uh, I went on a pretty epic trip in in Greece. Uh, it was port intensive, just like like yours. Uh, that was on Norwegian Jade, and um, it was you know I did a typical it itinerary. Uh, of you know Greece and uh, it, it also just before some of the violence that happened uh, visit Israel. So um, I'm a Christian, so it was really interesting seeing some of those uh, historic sites uh, from the Bible, etc., on those ports. And um, you know it it was a little bit before a lot of the violence happened, so that it was a little bittersweet after the fact. You know, going that I was just there and all that, and then knowing what's happening um, afterwards, but. Um, you know, we got the classic uh, Santorini was the, the last port with the beautiful sunsets and, you know, going, taking the cable car up and uh, just those awesome. I, I'm I'm a big uh, sunset and sunrise person and uh, you, 
it's hard to be taking in those scenes and in Greece with just the way that the sky would uh, has all the different colors of orange and, and red. It's all good. So yeah, so that was kind of my epic trip last year. Um, this year, uh, I'd have to say the most epic trip I went on was uh, I had the opportunity to uh, check out Explorer Journeys on Explorer One, and and it was really my first true luxury cruise brand uh, experience. And um, I prior, prior to that I, I did go in Yacht Club on MSC. Uh, didn't. You know, I had an amazing time, but it wasn't, you know, there was, it was full of service recovery issues, which, you know, no cruise is bad, but, you know, sometimes we experience things that, <laughs> you know, put a little damper in the, the vacation or whatever. But uh, just, just happening on board uh, Explorer Journeys was just an absolute incredible experience from the the service to the the, the food and just the, the beautifulness of the ship. It was more designed like a... Uh, a luxury hotel as opposed to a cruise ship so they had unique spaces and um but but it wasn't so small that they didn't have enter entertainment because a lot of those luxury brands are operating on ships of about 100 or 200 passengers so they don't they have more time to spend in, in port etc but whereas explore journeys is they're around 900 passengers and uh so they they have a few more people on board but it it never felt crowded and and yet they did they had entertainment every night and, and you know it was just a uh, absolutely incredible experience and it went to some awesome islands and and throughout the caribbean um places that you wouldn't normally visit on a cruise ship because you have to tender everywhere and uh, but it because of tendering we were, went like right in between the pitons in saint lucia uh, as well as we went into the yacht harbor in saint Barthes. so we got to see all these super luxury yachts all around and um you know see some awesome beaches Now clarify for me, isn't uh, Explorer Journeys the luxury brand for MSC? Uh, yes. Uh, well, technically MSC uh, North America or MSC Cruises, they're, they're one entity from a larger company called MSC, uh, and they're, they're a shipping company. Right. Um, so that family owns uh, different brands, and so Explorer Journeys is their luxury brand, and uh, and uh, ex MSC Cruises is their uh, mainstream brand. So, so on Explorer Journeys, um, first of all, I didn't know that their ships were that small. I thought their ships were, I just thought they were kind of a luxury version of your normal MSC cruise ship. Um, but uh, yeah, that's surprising that they're that small. When you, when you were on Explorer Journeys, uh, were there any, uh, was there any branding MSC branding at all, or did you? Was it like you were on a totally different cruise line? Uh, there is the branding there. They they use the logo, the MSC logo, in a lot of their materials as well. It's right on the side of the ship. Uh, however, any kind of comparisons really beyond that were not there. I mean, it was the experience was just in. 180 degrees difference from what you would get on the in their mainstream brands and you know for, just for example uh if you walk into the buffet someone would help you find a seat they would hope pull the chair out for you they would pour drinks for you and if you were walking in the buffet would none of it was actually something you would serve yourself so it was all like you know custom made everything um so just those little things and and just uh you know just the personalized service you received everywhere uh, made made a, a tremendous difference. So now I know that MSC, the 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 regular MSC brand, they're, they're kind of known for very reasonable pricing. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Does Explorer Journeys try to differentiate themselves from other luxury lines by being more price uh, friendly, or or are they are they strictly a luxury line and and not very. Uh, elastic in terms of price 
Well, I as they're getting started, I think they've been having some really spectacular promotions that have brought the price uh, to be something that's very reasonable. Uh, I mean, for example, most people are paying a lot more money to go on Icon of the Seas uh, just in a standard balcony room than that where everything is you have to pay extra for everything like drinks and Wi-Fi and all that. Whereas Explore Journeys, the pricing is, you know, sometimes several thousand less than what you would pay all in on Icon of the Seas. And you, you have a suite with butlers and personalized service, all the drinks, all the food, everything included. Um, so they are, they do have some ac exceptional deals right now. And and I know that, but even, even you can see that in a lot of the luxury brands also. So I, I don't, I don't know that their intent is to stay on this low side. The experience definitely was not any, you know, if you look at the dollar value that what it would have cost to go on the sailing I was on, um, you, you know, you would say that was like. Tremendous bargain. Well, I, I know MSC has some, you know, has a share of mixed reviews. Uh, I had an okay time. It was actually a good time because I was with my family and it was Christmas. So it's pretty hard to not enjoy your family at Christmas. Uh, uh, but, I, you know, I did, a, I did a podcast about it and, and, and you know, by and large, uh, MSC was on par with its competitors, but they had a couple, at least Maravilla had one major, major uh, uh, downside um, that I think hurts it, makes it for a lot of uh, people coming from other lines a once and done. But I, I'll tell you, after talking to you, I'm intrigued by uh by explorer journeys and i got a feeling that as soon as this podcast ends i'm going to be doing some research <laughs> um yeah definitely and and they actually have their they right now they have uh one ship and then the second one is going to be starting soon there was a little delay on that but they have plans to have six ships that are all going to be sisters to each other uh with the later ones having um more clean fuels and, and and i think even one of them is running off of a hydrogen so a totally new uh platform for uh for fuel and all that yeah I, i'm booked through 25 and i already have uh booked booked my first cruise for 26 that's kind of my new favorite cruise line i went on a, on a virgin ship and fell in love, so I, I booked the, hmm. the, the 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 new virgin ship, a brilliant lady for twenty six. So I'm 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 ready to pick my second cruise for twenty six, and it was going to be either Icon or Icon's uh, success. I think it's what Star of the Seas. Uh, it's yeah, going to be one seen. of those two. But uh, after talking to you, uh, I, I'm really going to look hard at Explorer. Now, have you been on Virgin? I've been on Virgin, yeah. I was on uh, one time uh, earlier. Uh, it was still during pandemic, uh, but it was at around the same time that you probably went because the, the number of people was a lot more significant than... Uh, it wasn't full, but it was definitely uh, very crowded. So I, I love the food on Virgin. I, I mean, I, I think they... The whole concept of having specialty dining all included, um, as well as some basic drinks, um, was really nice. I mean, I had some really awesome meals on there. I uh, I also love the uh, in the roundabout area. They have a musician usually most nights uh, doing some songs of their own as well as cover, and that was a great time for me. And you know, of course, they have all the the typical version entertainment too, like the uh, Scarlet Night um, with all the pop up performances. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and I think it was kind of refreshing to go because everything that they do as, as Virgin is slightly different than other cruise lines. Like they don't make any announcements on board, usually unless it's a safety thing. Everything is just done through the app. I mean, in fact, even if you like if you shake your app, you can get a bottle of champagne. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably, if you do that a lot, you're going to have a very high bar bill because <laughs> each one is about 100 bucks, but um, maybe more. Who knows? But but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a really cool experience. I um, I know a lot of people really love it, and and I have friends that they they do groups on there all the time, and they they just love going. Um, to me, I mean, I, I think it was refreshing. Was it my favorite? No, I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, um, you know, it was a cool, refreshing experience. Mm -hmm. What ship was it? 
I was Scarlet. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I went on. Uh, it actually was just recently. Yeah, I, I've only been off, uh, I don't know, a couple of months. Uh, it was my first, uh, it was a, a couple of firsts. Um, it was my first Virgin, and then it was my first Transatlantic. Um, and, and, yeah, you know, Beyond is still my favorite ship, but mm-hmm. just that one cruise made Virgin my favorite cruise line. I did I did a podcast on that and and what I said about it was it's like an adult playground. Um mm-hmm. so so uh yeah it uh, it it didn't take me long to to decide to uh, do my first cruise in 26 on 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 Virgin. Uh, talk about uh you've gone on just this year, some really interesting cruises, very different. All three are uh-huh. are, are quite different, but I want to hear about about all three. The first one I know, it, 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 it might not have been the first one you went on this year, but the first one that I know of was mm-hmm. the new uh, Margaritaville at Sea Cruise. Uh, it was an Islander, right? Yes, Islander. And and you know I had heard some really uh, bargain basement uh, talk about about uh, their first ship, uh, but but you know some people I respect a lot you know uh, you and where's Walter Travel and, and others have gone on 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 that uh, on on the new uh, Margarita Will at Sea ship uh, Islander and so I was kind of intrigued. Uh, so, t- so tell us. If, if I'll be honest with you, even on the first ship, which you know what I've heard is kind of bargain basement. Mm-hmm. If I was still living in Florida, you know, I lived nine years in Florida, I would yeah. definitely go because mm-hmm. it's so cheap, uh, and I'm also a veteran, and I know that they have some kind of really nice deal for veterans. So I would have gone on it, even with its. You know, I watched a, a video where it was called the, the worst cruise that someone has been on. Uh, yeah. Actually, I've seen a couple of cruises, a couple of videos, mm-hmm. but I still would have gone on it because of the the price and the, the short uh, duration. If I didn't have to, you know, if I still lived in Florida. So so talk about, uh, first of all, before you talk about Islander, had you gone on the first, uh, on their first ship? I had not gone on the first ship. No, I, um, I tend to not like shorter cruises as much because I, I enjoy cruises so much and when you're on the short time it's just like everything is passed and then boom you're it's over whereas if you're there for a week it's a little bit more um interesting and um yeah I, I did also hear those horror stories about that first ship and um you know so I went in on it with you know relatively low expectations but I was actually uh all those it you know I, I kind of had that my bar set pretty low but it on in most aspects, it was really awesome. I mean, they the the biggest thing I noticed was the fact that they took their theme and they just absolutely had it prevalent throughout the whole ship. And it was an old ship, but they they went through and they they modified everything. I mean, like the in the guest rooms, they were they still had the basic furniture that was there before, but they resurfaced them with bright colors, and you know the walls were. Uh, you know, they had pictures of parrots and other things like that on there, just tropical. Uh, you know, they fully did that theme throughout the whole ship and even areas where uh, it would have been hard to modify. They they took steps to make it to take it away because the ship actually used to be a, a Costa ship or they bought it from Carnival, um, and, but it was operating as Costa uh, for a while. And so they took it things that were Italian and they, they, you know, they somehow made it Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> so, um, but, but I, no, I was actually, honestly, just, you know, the overall experience was very good and, you know, the rooms were awesome. I mean, it was an old ship, but they made sure that there was power ports in the room by the bed. Um, you know, it, it seemed to be pretty good. The food overall uh, in main dining was not bad. I mean, I had some really exceptional appetizers and desserts, um, you know, some of the entrees were good. Some of them were a little off, but, uh, you know, overall, the service, the staff was really friendly, welcoming. Uh, and I also was in a group of people. I was with about uh, six other people, and we just had an absolute awesome time together. So it, a lot, oftentimes uh, it's based on who you're with on a cruise because um, we just we were spending days together night you know we went out to the night nightlife on the ship as well as well and we did tours together and when we went to to port and um 
you know, the people that you surround yourself with really make or break an experience. But, um, but I mean, overall, I, I was impressed. I mean, I, a lot of people might go on them if they're really someone that loves Jimmy Buffett. I, I you know, I, I like, I, I appreciate the vibe of it in terms of just like, you know, laid back being on a boat. Um, but I, I've never been someone that's really follows that more or less lifestyle, although I love cruises, so it's kind of funny, but, um, but no, I, I mean, I would absolutely, you know, for the, at the price point, getting that experience is, is just awesome. I, I did, there was one thing that was really kind of surprising for me though, is, um, we, the last night our group went, uh, to their specialty diner, uh, restaurant, which is a steakhouse that they have in all the margarita properties. And, uh, the food was excellent, but, the service really took away from from that, and and I just was surprised because normally when you're paying something extra, you should expect a slightly better experience. But um, in our case, the the service wise just didn't meet that expectations. And and I'll give them that it was their first sailing; they didn't have much time to to do uh, any um, any other testing. But uh, we had such a hundred percent better experience in the main dining. So. Um, and so I, I mean, I, and obviously, you know, I heard someone that went recent. And they said it was a lot better. So I, I, I'm, that's good news to know that it was probably just an isolated incident. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it it's awesome. They they really do the theme well. And um, you know, the one one of the other things that I was impressed with them is they, I, I've never actually stayed in a Margaritaville brand hotel, but they they did the all the same like linens and the the amenities where. The, they kind of were on brand with what they you would experience in their hotels. So in that, for that case, I mean, like most of the cruise lines will have real basic amenities in each of the rooms. Like maybe you'll have a bar of soap and then like a, a combined uh, body wash and shampoo. But in their case, they had all three things plus hand soap as well. So um, that was pretty uh, impressive in, in terms of that based on, uh, you know, whether they differ differentiated themselves from those lower end mm -hmm. brands. Yeah, you anticipated my my one, one question I was about to ask you. Uh, do they have specialty restaurants? And you tell me about the the steakhouse. Is that it? Do they, is that just that one? No, um, they have. Uh, you can. There's a sushi place, so that's a specialty dining. And then they also have some casual dining spots that. Uh, where you can get some seafood and other items uh, near the pool at the back of the ship. Uh, complimentary? Oh, uh, no, those oh, okay. are all, okay. I, I would say they're special. They're casual, but they're, you know, everything is a la carte at those okay. locations. They, do a, they are offering a uh, unlimited dining plan that's not a very expensive thing, at least at the moment when I got it. Um, and I'd recommend that just because it gives you options everywhere. Uh, there was still sort of a learning curve on that sailing I was on in terms of like what is included in that, what isn't. Um, I have a feeling now that they've been several sailings in that they're they're on top of all those mm -hmm. things. So I take it they're largely similar to other lines. I, I guess they have a cruise director. Yeah, they had a cruise director. I mean, they operate them very similarly. I mean, one of the things that also impressed me, even like, like I mentioned, going down to the theme um, most cruises will have a traditional thing where the captain welcomes everybody and gives a toast or, you know, they have something like that. But on, on Margaritaville, it's a margarita toast. And um, the captain came out in his captain's uniform and is like, he made some sort of joke and then he he took off the shirt and then he put on a, a tropical shirt. So they were even down to the the captain. Um, it was all on on brand, on theme, which is, you know, that's hard to come by these days in terms of I, I would equivalent that to some of the, the the branding that happens with disney it just the there they keep the everything up to that brand standard so. I, I i wish them a lot of luck i you know it's it, it it sounds a little bit like uh i'm a totally different experience but it reminds me of how virgin wanted to come in with with and be and be very much on on brand for for them you know and mm -hmm. and it's taken off and now you know, every year, the last couple of years, they've been sweeping all of the awards, best food, best entertainment, best this, best that. Uh, I'm not saying Margaritaville at sea is gonna, gonna be uh, rise to that level, but, but it sounds like because of what you said about them, them sticking to the brand, 
uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a great way to distinguish yourself from other lines, just like Virgin has distinguished itself mainly by having uh, no kids. Now, will Islander, uh, like the, the first ship, only do short cruises, or is it going to do seven-day cruises? They actually have va uh, various ones coming up. I mean, I think the vast majority of them are those shorter ones, the, you know, four or five day. Uh, but they also have some that are going to be seven day as well. Um, so I think there you might not be able to if you you had a date in mind, you want to cruise and you might not be able to follow their pattern because I it, it's one of those ones where they go three, four, five, seven. Um, but the seven night one, I think they're going to go to Grand Cayman, too, which which will be cool. But um Oh, the other thing with their branding too, one of their ports is Cozumel and that they use international pier. So they, they dock right at the Margaritaville. So it's interesting. So, you know, that, that's another brand thing. Well, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I don't particularly care for short cruises, but you know, I do uh, cruise still from Florida, fly to Florida to cruise for, for uh, long, longer cruises. That might be one where it would be a good idea to do, you know, a seven day cruise from Florida and then, do a back to back, you know, or side to side and do a three day mm -hmm. or four day on, on the Islander. Cause it sounds kind of fun. So, yeah, so I, talk I do. I see you guys. And you also get the experience of going under that, that bridge and in, in Tampa, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. To, I, I, to I, I didn't even like driving on that bridge. <laughs> in <laughs> fact, well, I shouldn't, I, I, I didn't drive. My wife drove over the bridge. Uh, uh, so okay. I, I, I have this thing about about tall bridges. So uh, I'm a wimp when it comes to bridges. Uh, uh, so you've already turned me on to two lines that just was nowhere on my radar. You know, Europa yeah. uh, and 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 uh, Margaritaville. So let's talk about uh, then after Margaritaville. I think you and, and we'll talk. We'll still talk about just the last few weeks or last last couple of months. <laughs> You, then you went back yeah. on Celebrity Beyond, right? I did, yes. Um, that was actually my third time on Beyond, but this, this sail, the reason I went on that sailing was because it was a Celebrity's President sailing. And um, I didn't really know, I, I knew Royal did a lot with their President sailing, and I saw some of the content from the prior years on Celebrities, and I thought it'd be cool to experience it because, you know, I, I've, I always thought that Beyond was a pretty awesome ship, and um, and they they really went all out with with his president's cruise thing so from you know special decorations like even the like one of the key features on the ship is the they have the elephant at the pool um whereas the other ones they have different uh key features there and, and they even decorated that with flowers and um I, I uh, throughout the ship you found all these you know fresh plants and everything just to kind of put it set this the sailing aside from some of the other ones um and they uh, you know, they did a lot of it was kind of aspect around their them visiting Coco K. Uh, so they did a, you know, Coco K. Sail, Coco K. Sail away party with where the, the servers walked around serving uh, options from Coco K. Like Coco Locos. And they had some of the snacks that they would have available at Coco Beach Club and other things. Um, and uh, I was really impressed because at that sail away party, they announced that, yeah, they're going to give away some cabanas on at, at perfect day at Coco Cay, and the, which was the next day in the sailing. But that when I they started giving them off, they had they gave off like two from each of the types. So you could have won uh, one of those over the water bungalow uh, cabanas on, just for being at the sailway party. So um, I was really impressed. I figured, yeah, you know, you know, everyone's gonna their chance to win one cabana. But you know, they they gave away a significant number of them, and um, you know, the president was there welcoming. She was doing the raffle and. Uh, you know, they, they just had a lot of cool experiences like that. But I, I think the highlight for, for me from that uh, was the uh, they they took over. You mentioned Virgin earlier. So uh, in Bimini, it was the last port. And Virgin normally uh, has they they have a contract with uh, the resorts there who operate this beach club. And when Virgin is there, it's the Virgin Beach Club. And um, but they also if, if Virgin is not there, you can buy a day pass to it. Um, but what Celebrity did is they bought it out, so they turned it into the Celebrity, you know, <laughs> uh, President's Cruise experience at, at the Bimini Beach Club. And, um, you know, from everything from having upgraded food options there, all the drinks were included. They they did a lot of entertainment around the pool, similar to, it was kind of a, a, a similar thing that what Virgin might do on a regular basis when they go there. 
Uh, but it, I don't know. I mean, it was just really cool. They did all that. And not to mention, they brought in some really talented individuals to perform throughout the week. Like they had some people from the U.S. swim team who did uh, swimming demonstrations, uh, as well as they taught some classes. And then they had an actual Broadway and, and West End singer sing with the cast at one of the shows and then did an, their own performance. So they just kind of went over the top for that um, celebration as being at the president's cruise. So I um, I felt that it was it was really cool. It was something I, you know, I, I was trying to go if, if there's going to be one celebrity sailing you go on a year, maybe you might do that one because uh, it's just filled with so much. I mean, they're already filled with great things, but they just did a whole lot to make it exciting. Uh, that president's experience and somewhat related uh, uh i had the president of uh celebrity on the podcast uh, the president who was the president when they introduced the the edge class so the yeah the, oh, the, the one yeah. before the president you you met or you saw on on this cruise and uh uh I, I, I proudly like to point out I'm in some celebrity uh, cruise groups on Facebook and I'm, um, mm -hmm. I, I pr pride, proudly like to point out that I told her, um, uh, Lisa Ludor Perlo, uh, that Beyond was my favorite cruise ship and I make sure I let everybody know that she tells me uh, Beyond is her favorite cruise ship as well. So, mm -hmm. um, So then... You went on Utopia. Uh, uh, I've had a lot of folks on the podcast in the last, uh, you know, six months who have gone on Icon. Uh, I mean, so so many of them that I kind of feel like I know Icon's layout. You know, I know just about every mm -hmm. inch of Icon's layout, though, though I haven't been on a ship yet. Uh, and then when I found out you were going on Utopia, I was so excited because it's I want to hear all about it. H have you been on Icon? Yes, I was on Icon in January. Oh, actually, okay, good. So. You can contrast uh, Utopia and Icon. Yeah, so, 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 so tell mm -hmm. us about it. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, they, you know, Royal builds it as the world's biggest weekend, and, and um, they jam-pack the schedule with everything to make that the world's greatest weekend. So, uh you know, it was just a really cool experience. Now, um, my a lot of people I know they their favorite Oasis class ship is Wonder, and um, I didn't have the opportunity to go on Wonder yet, so I don't really have much to compare with because the last Oasis class I went on was Oasis of the Seas, like the first year that Oasis came out, and that was what 10, 15 years ago. So, I um, my com but what I did feel like is. It had a lot of the elements that Icon of the Seas has, um, but maybe in a little bit more condensed spaces. Uh, it didn't ever feel any. I mean, I felt most of the time that it was as large, although I mean, it's obviously not as large as Icon of the Seas, but and they didn't do the the neighborhoods exactly the same. But it had a lot of like the pool deck was set up in a similar way. Um, they had a lot of cool features uh, that people love about the Royal Caribbean brand and um i really was impressed i mean the, the first the first night i mean it, we went to three incredible shows i mean we did all three it, most people go one show a night but because there are three nights or whatever but we would we did all all three of them so we went from we started at the ice show and then we went to the the broadway production show and then and then the the cap off the night with the uh, the ice show. Oh, I'm sorry, the water aqua show, which is yeah, which is 80s theme. And I, I know originally Oasis of the Seas had an 80s themed uh, aqua show, so they they did kind of a, a a spoof on that, or like an 80s duo or two was is the name. But um, it was awesome. I mean, like just the the talent they had on all those all three shows, and you go one thing to the next, like doing three big shows all in a row was just like super incredible but it just goes to show you that is the world's greatest weekend and um i was really impressed i mean you know it was non-stop go 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 um from everything and i you know i, I got home to la last night and I, I just crashed because it, it was the big uh, <clears throat> the world's greatest weekend 
talk about uh, uh, John the Wanderer. What are you up to at at at, at your brand right now? Just probably doing uh, your videos from from Utopia from your last couple of cruises. Got anything uh, anything going on? Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting you mentioned that this is, has been a pretty epic year so far. I mean, like I had these those three that we just mentioned, they're pretty much more or less back to back over the course of two months, um, you know, uh, very much close together. Um, but also the beginning of the year, I've had I've been on a number of sailings. I mean, that that iconic one I mentioned earlier on Explorer Journeys was uh was this year as well and and now I, I have a little bit of break until december before my next cruise so it'll be a little time for <laughs> for catching my breath after this biggest weekend thing uh but uh but no um i'll be yeah continuing to do content online uh, as well as um you know I, i'm someone that i really love sunsets and um a lot of my content i i'll feature just some scenes that i've seen because it really it kind of sets the tone for me in terms of peace and like trying to be reflective of things and um i so i i enjoy it otherwise you know i do i'll, I'll be writing a piece about uh <clears throat> utopia pretty soon um it'll be interesting to to follow along a lot of the people who are going on this uh the first sailing which is well departed now but um but anyway well, well we'll see because of the issues that <laughs> with the, get people getting there but but uh, but anyway um just kind of look at their experience versus mine uh, while I was on there. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And then uh, in December, I've got, I'm going to be going on Sun Princess. So, on, you know, Sun Princess has been doing Europe uh, this year and they're coming to Fort Lauderdale in, in October. And I, I have sailing booked in December. December so it should be December, nice to experience uh, that new year. version of Princess. Okay. The, okay. Because I'm going on Sun Princess yeah, December, December of this next year. year. Uh, in fact, I'll talk. I'll, we'll chat about your upcoming oh, uh, cool. cruises in a minute. But, but have you ever done or or considered a John the Wanderer group cruise? Oh, you know, I, I tried one in the past, and I actually, um, I've gone on a couple of uh, people, uh, uh, friend groups together. Um, they're a lot of fun. Like I mentioned, on when I went on um, Margaritaville Islander. Uh, it was with a good group of people, and the the people make the difference. So, I have uh, had the opportunity to do that. And, and coming up next year, um, Norwegian Aqua uh, is starting. It's their next uh, newest ship or whatever in the Norwegian brand, and um, I'm going on it with a group of people uh, on one of their shorter uh, Bermuda sailings. So that should be kind of fun to experience that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I've considered doing some groups coming up, yes. What do you do, uh, shifting gears just a little bit from cruising, what do you do in your me time when you're not cruising? <laughs> Thinking about the next one. You know, I like going for walks and uh, I love music. I, although most of the time when I'm watching, I love live music, but I tend to mostly just do that when I'm on on cruises. So you you know if i'm not cruising uh i'm my life is probably a little more boring i i love i love live music as well especially on cruises i for valentine's day i went on a on a r and d cruise it was just great uh uh i i i i i did some reflections on it and and wished that it had been a little longer and so now that same uh, same cruise is going to happen for Valentine's Day of uh, 25 and they've added a day. So so uh, unfortunately, I can't catch that one because I'll be on another cruise uh, at that time. Uh, and then in, in January, I'm 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 booked on and this was this is a long time bucket list item. Uh, the Soul Train Cruise. Did you did you watch that growing up? I I've seen a few of the episodes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that should be have, awesome. Those theme cruises. Oh yeah, they, they have a they have a sold out uh, cruise. In fact, uh, the one I'm going on is in January, and it's sold out so fast that they've added uh, a second one in I think November, uh, with pretty much the same lineup. So. 
So yeah, yeah that that's going to be a real highlight. So yeah, I, I love live music too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, some some major shifts out in twenty four and twenty five. Uh, uh, you mentioned one. I was going to mm-hmm. ask you, do, do you have any plans to try one? But I, I know you're going to go on. Uh, well, you've already been on Icon mm-hmm. that came out this year, and then Sun Princess. Uh, mm-hmm. So so we, we both got that booked. And it, what what else do you have booked? Um, well, I actually, uh, I have my winter loaded up, let's just say. So I, I, got, like I, said, I have a little, I've got a little break until December. Then I, I've got Sun Princess there. And then, uh, um, I, I have another sailing, uh, January one in February, one in March. Um, so, I, you know, there, there's about a month in between each one, but, um, it's a lot of fun stuff. So I, I, I've got a couple, uh, sailings on Explorer Journeys booked as well. Um, so it'll be cool to, those are going to be seven night ones, uh, which will be the one I went on before was 10 nights. So it'll be interesting to, to see the difference uh, of going on them for a few, few shorter days, uh, and uh, I'm actually going to be, I, I currently booked to go back on uh, Oasis again after all these years. So it'll be, I'm going to be excited to kind of compare it uh, after my experience on Utopia this this past few days. What uh, What's on your travel bucket list? Oh, my travel bucket list. So I just love trying to different experiences. So I, I mean, like most people, I'll say that you know, one day maybe it would be cool to go to the Maldives and and stay for a few days in an overwater bungalow. Um, I uh, I have a lot of things that I, I've enjoyed doing, so I'll go back. I mean, like I love going to Barcelona, so I'd go back there again. Uh, I've never been to Australia, so maybe Australia would be on the the bucket list. Um, but I, I don't. There isn't like. I don't have a thing like, oh, I just have to do that. I mean, like, I just, I try to be in the moment, enjoy whatever experience is in front of me. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I'd, sure, I'd, I'd, I'd go to the Maldives and <laughs> have one of those overwater bungalows so I could see a beautiful sunset there. You say, you say that so matter-of-factly. Sure, I'll take an over-the-water bungalow in Maldives. <laughs> oh, yes, I would too. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah. Well, John, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's good to meet you and good to talk to you. Before we let you go, though, a couple of light questions, uh, maybe even fun questions, uh, one mm-hmm. of which I call an oddball question because it doesn't directly relate to cruising. So so the first question, uh, I like to ask this question because I get nothing but ideas, and I, I've tried almost everything I've heard. Uh uh, what are your favorite cruise drinks and cruise food? Okay, that's a good question. So my favorite drinks, I guess I'm a, um, I love coffee. So, you know, one of the biggest things the last few years that all cruise ships have added really awesome coffee experiences. Like I, um, one of my biggest things, it's usually the first and maybe the last thing I do when I go on Celebrity is I, <laughs> I go to the coffee shop and, and have a, have a coffee there so I, I put that at the top of my list there but um you know I, usually once a day I, I love to get a tropical drink like a pina colada or something uh then the rest of the time uh I try different things I, I don't have a whole favorite like on celebrity the martini bar is pretty nice so um trying some of those different ones or mostly just being there for the experience is kind of what I enjoy the most um I tell you that that's that's a show. I can I can see that on a reality TV show. I mean, yeah. you know, you you can be a non-drinker and just sit in front of the martini bar and be mesmerized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and any, actually, any, oh. any listeners who've been on 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 Celebrity uh, the Edge Class will know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, those who have it on your uh, list. Uh, the martini bar is is one of the high points of going on a celebrity uh, 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 cruise. Yeah, definitely. And actually, with the, the president's cruise that I went on, uh, this really amazing flair bar- bartender, her name's Danielle. Uh, she was on there helping some of the staff learn and train, and I just watched their progression throughout the week, and it, it was just amazing at. Uh, at that and she even helped them put together something special for the uh the event on on bimini as well so that was really cool 
Uh, so you asked about my favorite foods on cruise as well. So I'm a foodie. I, I love a little bit of everything from anything from like real basic stuff to, you know, really gourmet. But um, one of the biggest things I, I love about Celebrity and Royal is the fact that they have a really big emphasis on Indian food. And um, I've always loved uh, the different flavors that you have options available. So uh, that's probably my favorite cruise food would be Indian because they You know, sometimes locally you can't always get the best options, but they always seem to deliver a really <laughs> full of flavor dishes uh, on there. And, um, you know, like in, in the case of Royal Caribbean uh, at the Windjammer, they have multiple options every day. And then Celebrity does it on the buffet as well. Um, and most of the menus, there there is like one in Indian dish, whether it's a vegetarian or, or whatever, as part of the main dining. Mm -hmm. Have you been to... Uh any of the specialty restaurants on beyond yes uh, i went to the fine cuts uh, when i went on beyond uh, this past time uh and i also uh, have dined. it's not really a specialty restaurant but if you stay in aqua class you can eat at blue and and i've also uh, been in sweets i was at the uh, illumine as well uh, but in terms of the actual specialty restaurants uh on beyond that was it was the 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 steakhouse mm -hmm. yeah fine cut uh, we we went on that was our, our mediterranean cruise for our anniversary and mm -hmm. uh uh they found that out at fine cut and they brought us out a nice cake um oh, there you so but but i i brought up the specialty restaurants uh uh because my favorite meal and and i'm not going to qualify at sea favorite meal mm -hmm. period was on a specialty restaurant on uh on beyond um uh, called le voyage by nice. by daniel ballard and I, I hope i'm saying his name right he's a michelin rated chef i think he has places mm -hmm. in paris and places in in new york city but oh my goodness and uh, you know some people just look at me yeah right when i tell them it was the best meal i ever had but mm -hmm. You know, probably at their New York restaurant or their Paris restaurant, you know, we we probably would have paid two hundred dollars a person. So mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad, but it was you know, yeah. on the ship. But it was great. Uh, okay, next uh, next question: uh, What's your most memorable, or funniest, or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? All right. Uh, I, I've, I had to think about this a little bit, but I have, I have to say, like, I've never been one that uh, really big on uh, singing karaoke. And um, when I was younger, maybe in my 20s, I remember that I don't know what possessed me to want to sing, but um, I was hanging out with a group of people. Uh, they said, oh, we should do a duet. And I, I don't remember exactly. Oh, yeah. I think we picked... Uh, like an Elvis song, which was one of the hardest things to perform uh, as a duet. And I, I, we were, you know, we had to go up on stage and, uh, you know, sing that as a duet. And it was absolutely horrible, I'm sure, because, you know, I, I'll sing in the car, but uh, <laughs> sing along to things, but having to sing on with, and back then, a karaoke or croaky tracks were nothing really like the real songs either. So it was hard to follow along with the audio. So I'm sure if fortunately back then there weren't, uh, uh, you know, cell phones and everything that people were taking videos of. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that's not available, but um, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to find that one, but that was probably a, an embarrassing moment doing that on, on, well, at least at oh, least you did it. I mean, I, I don't have mm -hmm. the guts to do it. I would jump overboard before I sing karaoke in public. But but mm -hmm. uh, I heard on Virgin, I, I didn't notice it, um, but I heard they have like private karaoke rooms. Uh, so maybe I'll check those out next time I'm there. But I'll never do karaoke in public. <laughs> never. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the oddball question, uh, and again, it's only oddball in that it's, not necessarily related to cruising. Yeah. So, so first of all, welcome to the many uh, John DeWandra fans and friends who are listening. We certainly hope you have enjoyed listening to the Jury of Cruising podcast, and we'll come back to listen to additional episodes. So, John, share one thing that my listeners and your friends and fans don't know about John. 
Oh, that's a tough one there. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty, I, I guess kind of one thing that people might around me not, might not really know is um, I, for a, a number of years, I was a DJ. So I DJed weddings and other events of that type. Now, you mentioned being introvert, and I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. So I had to really put on an acting hat and um, just kind of try to be a different person when I did it, because it, it doesn't match my my natural uh, personality. So um, that's kind of one thing that you you would never guess if uh, someone didn't tell you that. All right. Uh, well, John, thank you so much for coming on the Gerald Cruising Podcast. Uh, and all the best with John uh, the Wanderer. You do some, uh, you do a lot of cruising and you do some interesting cruises in you know, I'm pretty confident that we're we're going to want to have you back uh, if you will be back. So, yeah, so. definitely. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And there's actually just one other thing I, I thought I'd mentioned, um, you know, earlier uh, we, you, you brought up that I'm a travel agent. Yeah, I, I do. I love helping people with uh, booking travel and things of that sort. And um, I was able to negotiate uh, because I went on those two amazing uh, celebrity and Royal Caribbean sailings recently that. Uh, for people who are listening on this, as well as uh, people that follow me for the next couple of weeks, I have some really great offers on Celebrity and on Royal Caribbean in terms of getting some additional onboard credit uh, for doing a booking. Like in the case of Celebrity, I have $150 uh, onboard credit for booking a balcony or higher um, on a six-night or more sailing through the end of 2024. So that gives a lot of opportunities uh, because having a balcony room is really awesome. And um there's some great ones coming up uh, on that. And then with Royal Caribbean, um, I also have some onboard credit, depending on the type of uh, category that you're in, up to $100 additional on top of other any offers that are currently available. So it's pretty nice to have a little bit of extra money on board. So I'd be happy to share it with anyone on board. It's going to be available for the next two weeks uh, after this podcast runs. So um I'd be happy to help you out with that and give you a little bit of onboard credit. Well, well, tell tell our listeners, uh, John, how to uh, take advantage of that. Uh, um, what, 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 how, how should they contact you? Yeah, well, all you have to do is uh, you can get in touch with me. Um, I'm sure you're going to be sharing some of my contact details, uh, but you know, if you message me on online, we can start a dialogue. Um, you know, other one, my email is john at johnthewanderer dot com. You know what, John? Send me. Uh, uh, some links, uh, and then I'll put it in the show mm -hmm. notes so no one has to worry about having a pen to take notes. Uh, uh, and I know I won't right. remember to put it in the show notes without you sending me something. <laughs> so so uh, uh, do that for me, and I'll help you try to get the word out. Sounds good. All yeah. right. Well, uh, all the best with uh, to John DeWanderer, and as I like to say, we will see you on the ocean. Have a great one. All right. Thanks. Bye. The Jorb Cruising and Cruising Interrupted, each $16.99 plus shipping, and new release, the Jorb Cruising again for $18.99 can be ordered at the link on the com. For each of the three books, use the discount code Jorb Cruising Podcast and get $4 off. The Joy of Cruising books are also available at Amazon. Order the ebook at Amazon or your favorite online retailer. Stay in touch by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or following the Joy of Cruising Podcast on Instagram. We're constantly adding new shows. Please leave a review and tell a friend about us. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.